Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well and that you're all having a great day. As always, likes, comments, and subscribes are appreciated. They do indeed help with the algorithm. Welcome back to another News I Missed, where I go over News I Missed, because there's always a bajillion things happening in the cryptocurrency market, and therefore I bring them to you here. And without further ado... Uh, let's jump right into it. Auction House Sotheby's has sold a rare pear-shaped diamond for $12 million in cryptocurrencies. Jeez Louise, that makes it the most expensive jewel ever auctioned on the planet for cryptocurrencies. For the unidentified Hong Kong buyer, the 101 carat diamond, which was second, was the second pear-shaped diamond ever to go on auction, was a veritable bargain. Mm-hmm. Uh, as Sotheby's had estimated the diamond would sell for around $15 million, but I guess many people aren't buying rocks from the ground anymore. The auction house accepted bids for the diamond, which was cut into shape by gem company Diacor in fiat or cryptocurrency, Bitcoin or Ethereum, to be paid via Coinbase Commerce. It was unclear which crypto was used to buy the gem in October. Sotheby's auctioned off for the cash uh, for cash this time a 102 carat oval diamond at which diamond experts called a cheap price of 15 million dollars. Delusion. The point is, uh, cool. This was very popular news during the week because they sold a rock for cryptocurrencies. Uh, we don't know who purchased it. That's just completely logical. Normally, a lot of times, if you've never seen one of the auctions, they always like you know picking up the phones because people are talking to them on the other side of the world, giving them the okay to make the bid. However, um, I do not personally think that I would ever. Now, this is more of a, um, even if I had $300 million, I probably would not ever buy a rock. Just going to throw it out there. I understand that they can be wonderful investments. Um, however, I'd much rather have art and or uh, real estate just because, you know, this is a rock. Anyway, so that's the Sotheby's news. I guess it's the is the history being made portion of of someone. So remember the guy who um, sold or yeah yeah oh yeah he did uh, gave away his Bitcoin for pizza. Now, imagine a world where Bitcoin goes up to half a million dollars and we have like a twenty eight thousand dollar ether. I think someone's gonna be a little bit upset with their rock, but. Uh, yeah, yeah, go, go rock diamond, $12 million. All right, that's the Sotheby's news, and let's move on. Next up in news, I'm sure that will elate everyone out there. Coinstar customers in Connecticut now have the option of purchasing Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies, typically... Those big green machines one sees in the corners of supermarkets and grocery stores allow a person to bring all their loose change and trade it for paper bills. I remember when, I, I think, just random side story since it's the weekend. Uh, when my when I was younger and my supermarket first got one of those machines, I don't know if it was a coin star, but I got one of those like, hey, you could take all your coins to get cash here. I thought it was the coolest thing in the entire world because I remember those like... Used to have to go to the bank or like to like a 99 cent store to get those pieces of paper that you would like roll the pennies in and like roll the dimes and the nickels in. And I remember I was like, wait, wait, wait there's a machine where I don't have to roll up anything anymore. I thought it was very cool, but you know. Now, however, though machines are permitting customers to exchange those coins for digital currencies, suggesting just how big and popular the space has become in recent years. Coinstar machines in the area are teaming up with digital currency exchange CoinMe in Seattle. The machines garnering the Bitcoin trading option are situated within Stop and Shop and Big Y. Okay. Is that okay? Big Y supermarkets throughout Connecticut. And there are already plans to set these machines up at approximately what? Approximately go other state. What? Is that English? Approximately go other locations. Okay. Uh, the guy who set up these machines said, We see sales continue to grow. People can now take loose change and turn it in, but there are also people coming in with $20, $50 bills at a time. The average transaction is $500. <laughs> the, the point is loose change. So, like, you go there with, like, maybe, you know, you've been saving up coins for a whole year and it comes out to, like, $2,150. 
the average transaction is five hundred dollars. That means people are going there with like stacks, and they're being like, "All right, this is the quickest way for me to get some Bitcoin." Especially, I wonder how many people. Not even joking. I wonder how many people run to these machines if they see the market pumping and they're like, "Where's the where's the closest coin star?" They, they run there. I'm sorry. I have a my my imagination sometimes runs wild. The point is, yeah. Um, it's not just Connecticut. I know there are many other states where this is also possible. And it's not just Coinstar machines. There are other machines where you can also do this as well. But, y y you know, get it. Go for it. I mean, if this is your way of getting into the market, then please, by all means, the average of being 500, that means people are really, all right, let's move on. Next up in, in super shocking news, I, I could not believe that something like this would ever take place. The parliament of the Economic Community of West Africa States, called ECOWAS, that is E-C-O-W-A-S, has joined the list of African organizations that have cautioned against the use of cryptocurrencies. I'm shocked. Why, why, why would they do such a thing? It is warning... What? In its warning to West Africa crypto users, the legislative body insists these digital assets are too volatile. <laughs> yeah, like your currencies, they inflate by like 9 million percent over the course of a year. Like, what are you talking about? And as such, uh, their use on the African continent is not without dangers. Fantastic. According to a report, this parliamentary warning came after the joint committee meeting that was held in Ouagadougou. The meeting, according to the report, has been convened to explore the prospects of cryptocurrencies as a facilitator for investment. However, following the meeting that was also attended by cryptocurrency experts and resource persons, the Joint Committee reminded crypto users in this subregion of the digital currency's many shortcomings. According to the report, one of the shortcomings of cryptocurrencies is that while they may be used as a medium of exchange, users can still refuse to accept them as payment. Such refusal is currently not seen as a violation or a contravention of the relevant laws. Oh boy. So, um, sure. Why not? Um, I, I actually get a little happy. This is me. I'm weird. Whenever we get any country or countries who like say something negative about cryptocurrencies, uh, because I still believe just based off of logic that we've had for the last two years, people within these countries are either investing in bitcoin investing in ethereum directly investing in it or have invested in mining in some sort of way it's always for some reason the higher ups and the people who make the laws who actually are the people who tell other people not to get into these things uh and i still think there's going to be like a bit of a backlash in the future when these people in these countries realize that they were told to continue to hold tight onto their crappy fiat currencies that are inflating I mean, if the U.S. dollar has inflated by 6% already in the last couple of months, what do you think is happening in other places? So when they figure out that the people who told them in 2019, 2020, 2021 not to get into the cryptocurrency space, they realize these people got into the space at that time when they told them no, they might be a bit upset. So yeah, sure. Um, please continue to caution and tell people there's, there's actually a lot of this news going around the last like five or six days. Um, a lot of uh, this country is now saying that not only do they not like cryptocurrencies, but also stable coins. This country saying we don't like stable coins, we don't like cryptocurrencies. It's coming out more and more in force because the news that we were getting years ago, for those of you who were not here, was that countries, they were like cryptocurrencies, they have no point in our market. Cryptocurrencies will do nothing. But now they realize that with the US dollar inflating, the other fiat currencies around the world completely crumbling and all the people who are uh, running to their banks, wink, wink, trying to get their money out and they can't, uh, that cryptocurrency stands a, a, a very big chance of now usurping the US dollar and taking over uh, the entire economic system. Because especially as prices continue to drop, uh, you know, more companies are still buying and getting into it and there's barely any Bitcoin left. So this is indicative of what's actually going to be taking place. But alas, you know, caution, as they say. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up, according to Christine Lagarde, the head of the ECB, at least 80 central banks around the world are looking at central bank digital currency adoption. They said, we think that it's a duty of us to actually have available digital currencies that would operate to the benefits of consumers. Shut up. This is such nonsense. And they keep doing this over and over and over. The entire idea, first, first of all, 
A year and a half ago, no country on the planet had any prospect of creating a digital currency except for China. That was it. We had news about the sand dollar potentially being a thing, and there was one other country who was like, yeah, maybe we'll potentially think about testing it. The part of the issue is, is that people are, we, we, we may not see this on a daily basis. Tons of people are actually using stable coins. And I mean like a massive, huge portion of the cryptocurrency community. A lot of this is happening for people who uh, live in different countries. You cross across the border. Instead of having to go to one of, the, one of those things, you simply transact in a stable coin. You transact in Bitcoin. You transact in Ethereum. And these are actually, these volumes are increasing daily all the time. This is why it's very significant. When we talk about the other day, Ethereum transacting trillions of dollars over the course of a two-month period, that's insane. There are a number of stable coins also built. The, the, the point is, people are finding ways to get around the usage of uh, our own stable coins that we kind of have right now. The, you know, the dollar and the euro and all these other things because people, you know, it's just a lot easier to use them. I also mentioned to you before, there's no reason to actually hold these currencies anymore. If all these banks have 0% interest rates or negative interest rates where you have to pay them every month to hold your money with them, and you look at the actual stablecoin market and holding certain stablecoins, you get 4 to 7% return on your money after a year compared to zero from the bank. Why would you ever hold dollars or euros anymore? It literally, it, you are falling behind, especially with a 6% inflation rate. You are losing tons of money every single year. This is why we see this rapid acceleration of every country being like, hey, yeah, yeah, now a central bank digital currency, we got to have it, it's great for the consumer. They don't care about us. They do not care in any capacity about who we are, what we do, they just want our money. All of this is just about control, all of it. I don't even have my tinfoil hat on, you know this. If you have lived on this planet for more than 25 years, you should have a very basic, clear understanding that you are just a number. You are there to work into your 65, maybe even 75 or not retire at all because that's how the system is actually working. You are meant to pay money into the system. There's a tax on everything. There's a tax on, there's a tax on stuff that you buy in the store that already has a tax on it. That was already previously taxed. Your money is then taxed. Everything has a tax on it. You are meant to continue paying until you are too old and fragile to not be able to do it anymore. And then you are told to go sit on a beach somewhere and thank you for your service. Now your kids can continue paying into the system. It's just about control, the entire broad system of it. But without having to get too much deeper into that, this is why they're doing it because they realize you'll also see in the next couple of weeks as well the, the call for stablecoin regulation. Because they realize that the the entire point of, for those of you who weren't here in 2018, when Facebook first announced that they were going to be launching their own uh, currency, the idea was is that it would be a stable coin. It would be based off of a basket of other currencies. And I think the US dollar wasn't one of them. And, it, and, and the US was like, hey, you got to use the US dollar because everyone else is forced to use the US dollar. Regulators clamped down very hard on the usage of this stable coin. But what happened was is that Coinbase got bigger, Binance got bigger, Gemini got bigger, other crypto exchanges got bigger, DeFi got bigger, Coinbase has their own US dollar, Binance has their own US dollar, there's a Gemini dollar, you kind of get the point. These things are still being used by other companies and by other people because when you want to actually make money through DeFi or other platforms, you don't use the US dollar. You use this stable coin. You use that stable coin. Now, what happens when you see that, even on a, on a, 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 a good day, that 80 million people are transacting in these stable coins to make money back and forth. They're completely going around the banking system. I don't want to use your crappy banking system. You're not giving me any money. If I have my money in your bank account, I'm losing money every single year. I can trade stable coins. Like there, there are tons of people who actually do trade stable coins or even just hold stable coins. And I can make 7% per year. This is why, we, like I'm telling you, like we're, we're going to start to see a huge wave of central banks in general talking about cryptocurrencies are bad when they said they weren't bad before is because they're feeling the pressure. They, they explicitly feeling the pressure. Have you not seen all the news that's been going around about the, 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 the rate of inflation and the cost of things rising and the Fed being like, the, the Fed cannot now say that they're going to taper or slow down this printing of money that they're pushing into the markets. Because the moment anyone mentions that, the stock market falls. This is like this is this is the actual revolution that we're witnessing right before our eyes. 
the system is, I don't know if I can even say this word on here. It is D-R-U-N-K on the money that's constantly being printed. It, the, the whole system is so messed up and so many people aren't paying attention to it. It's really, really insane. That's why the, the benefit of consumers where I would love to sit in a room with her and have her tell me 10 of the actual benefits for me and you. They said, so what would it look like? Well, it could be used like banknotes. I don't think it is like banknotes because it will not have the degree of anonymity that banknotes have. Oh, that's weird. In talks with consumers who answered in large numbers, Lagarde noted that many remarked, we want our privacy to be safeguarded, but we don't want anonymity because we realize the risk of anonymity. Who said that? Which person on this planet says, I don't want my own space? Tell me exactly why this sentence makes any kind of sense. I want my own space, but I don't want my own space because I realize the risk of having my own space. I wonder how easy it is for these people just to lie. Like, is there like a lying class that they take together and they like hold hands and sing Kumbaya? Because we don't want anonymity because we realize the risk of anonymity. What exactly is the risk? What exactly is the risk of going back? Whatever. The point is, you can see I get a bit fired up because it's nonsense. And part of the problem is, is that you have a huge portion of people who believe this, who believe it. These, there are people out there who don't understand what Bitcoin is, have been told for years that Bitcoin is a farce and Bitcoin is fake and Bitcoin is so and so and the cryptocurrency market is this. And they only hear news on TV about when crypto prices drop, never when it's going up, when prices drop, when things are bad, when something's happening to Binance. And you have these people who are trying desperately to maintain control of this current monetary system that we've been sluggishly going with since the 1910s. And they say, yeah, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin bad. This, this digital currency that, you know, you have on your phone and we can track you everywhere. This good. You don't, you don't want anonymity. No, anonymity bad because, ooh, bad, bad people do things with anonymity and, and we want to protect you. And the people sit there and go, yes, please protect us from ourselves. <sighs> it's exhausting. It's so exhausting. That's the um, central banks are desperate and they're looking for ways to try and convince people that they're the correct answer. But, you know, logic. Let's move on. Next up, Fidelity Digital Assets, a crypto focused arm of the US based mutual fund giants Fidelity aims to add about 100 workers, increasing its headcount by around 70%, as institutional investors are increasingly interested in crypto assets beyond Bitcoin. Fidelity now offers only custody, training, and other services for Bitcoin and plans to hire new employees in technology and operations in Dublin, Boston, and Salt Lake City. Citing Tom Jessup, president of Fidelity Assets, the report did not specify when it might happen. I assume soon. They you don't release things like this. Like we're gonna we're, we're looking to hire people in like 2028. Does that sound like any? No. Like I'm, I'm sure this will happen within the next couple of months. Uh, Fidelity is constantly uh, ramping their their movement up into the cryptocurrency space. I'm pretty sure that they're going to try and have their own cryptocurrency trading desk. And I'm really shocked that they in a consortium of other people haven't launched their own stablecoin. But I assume behind the scenes, someone has given them the 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 finger wag and kind of told them no. So it's now Fidelity and Coinbase who are on a hiring spree. We heard about Coinbase last week. Uh, Coinbase is trying to hire tons of new people. I don't know, I think it's several hundred people they're trying to hire. And that is in, in, in conjunction? Yeah, sure. At the same exact time as when they're trying to uh, uh, launch uh, Coinbase India, wink, which they say they're not trying to do wink, but we all know that it's going to actually happen. So cool. Fidelity keeps expanding into the cryptocurrency space. This is just another indication that very big money is in the market because, you know, logic. And without further ado, let's move on. Next up, also in well, this was this was this was more popular than I assumed it was actually going to be. Award-winning director Spike Lee has teamed up with Bitcoin ATM operator CoinCloud 
on a multi-million dollar crypto campaign. Digital currency, they said, is viable for not just people of color, but anybody who has been historically excluded from the traditional financial system. CoinCloud, a digital currency machine operator with more than 20, no, 20, well, okay, read it, read it, wait, 2,000 machines, announced Wednesday a multi-million dollar campaign with a short film starring and directed by Spike Lee. This was online, for those of you who haven't seen this, I'm sure you can find it on, on Twitter. It was touted as like a, a commercial so everyone was like, cool, it's going to be a commercial. And then my friend sent it to me. It's like two minutes long. And we were kind of like, ha you know, having a bit of a laugh because no one's going to watch a two. Like, imagine watching your favorite TV show. And it goes, commercial break. It doesn't say that, but it goes to commercial break. And then this two minute long commercial goes and you're like, where's where's my show? This is kind of how it was. It was OK. It was a it was a bit. I don't want to say the word cringe, but I understood the 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 meaning behind it. Um I don't know what else to say. I really have no idea what else to say. Uh, this was very popular news. Uh, the the movie ad film was all over the place. Um, I think it's clear. I, I guess I guess the 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 window has gotten clearer that more rich people are definitely in the cryptocurrency space. I don't think there's any rich person out there. I don't think the, I don't think anyone with a with a net worth of less than five million dollars is not in crypto at this point anymore. Uh, and Spike Lee is incredibly rich. So just as, you know, I doubt that he was did this whole get up in, in a two minute movie uh, to say that he has no Bitcoin just because, you know, logic. Anyway, that's the Spike Lee news. I'm, you None of you were expecting me to say the word Spike Lee today. So that, you know, surprise, um, go, go find it. It's not bad, but it's definitely like a, a it's like a movie. Anyway, you'll find it. All right. <laughs> Let's move on. And next up, contemporary British artist Damien Hirst is launching a series of 10,000 artworks and NFTs in the form of a fascinating experiment that forces buyers to choose between possession of the actual artwork or the NFT. It's being called The Currency. It is a series of unique but almost identical spot paintings which correspond to NFTs as well. They're going to be $2,000 each. Now, for those of you who don't know, I love art. I collect Damien Hirst quite frequently. And I'm going to actually try and get one of these as well. The entire point of uh, this, he calls it an experiment, uh, is that when it happens... You basically have to choose if you want an NFT or if you want the actual physical artwork. Now, I've been going back and forth with a couple of friends who also do collect art, and we're kind of torn down the middle, <laughs> basically because uh, the idea of a physical artwork is kind of, you know, cool to have. You know, I mostly own physical art, except for the the NFTs that people have gifted me. Thank you very much. Um, but then on the other side of it, it's like, if you have the actual NFT with an actual certification from the actual, you know, digital NFT thing, uh, it's still there. It's still made by the artist. Uh, you don't have to pay any money to actually hold it anywhere. It simply exists on the blockchain. So you don't have to e expensively put it somewhere or try to make sure that you insure it or something, anything like that. So uh, we're kind of going back and forth. Um, this is very popular news this week. Every artwork is signed, numbered, watermarked, and features an embedded hologram, making them very difficult to copy or forge, much like a banknote. That's no accident either. The idea is that the physical artworks could, as much as their NFTs, act as a real medium of exchange or as a currency. Damien Hirst is a, is a fascinating character. Not everyone will like his work, uh, just simply because... Look at Damien... Type in Damien Hurst artwork and you'll definitely find like a lot of like spotty things. And uh, anyway, I, I find him quite fascinating. So I'm definitely going to try and get one. It's really weird. Have you guys ever tried to get like um like years ago? I used to like uh, invest, try to invest in these things like Yeezys and like other like uh, shoes and things like that. Sometimes you have to like join a raffle to be able to have the chance to be able to buy the actual thing. So this is kind of what it is as well. You have to like. I had to apply to be able to buy this. So, fun. Anyway, <laughs> that's the Damien Hurst NFT news. And let's move on. 
And to finish things off, Bitcoin's second layer payment protocol known as the Lightning Network has been expanding unnoticed by many users. First proposed in 2015 and launched in 2018, its adoption and capacity have accelerated during the past few months. The Lightning Network allows users to send fast and low-cost transactions via payment channels. Unlike the Bitcoin layer, Lightning transactions are processed off-chain via a mechanism called gossip and probing that enables nodes what to be able to follow possible transaction routes. Arcane Research published a recent, recent, recent report wondering if this Bitcoin-based network will have a similar momentum as DeFi did in July of this year during the DeFi summer. A mania broke out during this period and seemingly everyone started to invest in DeFi apps. Um, here's the actual chart for it right here. The way that the Lightning Network works, you know the idea for uh, like staking your coins? This is kind of Lightning kind of did it first, if you will. It's been six years now. The idea is you, well, you would lock up your Ethereum to stake your Ethereum, and this way you lock up your Bitcoin into the Lightning Network. And what happens is the more Bitcoin you have, so let's say you lock up 0.5% Bitcoin, but you separate it into 0.1 five times. You yourself would have five payment channels that would allow other people's money to kind of go through these channels. And every single time that someone uses your channel to be able to send a payment, so let's say someone's sending a payment for 0.08 Bitcoin. It goes through your channel because your capacity is 0.1. And you actually get the the Lightning Network fee from that. So people are only paying, I, I think it's around one Satoshi, which is nothing. Like that is, it's, it's, it's dust uh, as, as far as cost goes. But if you have tens of thousands of these transactions passing through your network every single day, you're getting every single one, you're getting 10,000 Satoshis. This, of course, leads us up into the discussion of a future Bitcoin price. If we ever reach, reach, reach one-to-one parity, then per day you're making 10,000 just from one of those actual uh, channels. But the capacity has been raising because I, people understand that Lightning actually works. The idea was many years ago, everyone was like, Lightning doesn't work. Ethereum's gonna work instead. Lightning doesn't work. Cardano is gonna work instead. Lightning doesn't work. XRP is gonna work instead. But now we know that, that Lightning actually does work. And I think this is also increasing because of the news that we had from El Salvador. For those of you who don't know, one of the main apps that people are using in El Salvador to send Bitcoin payments is with Lightning. That's how it works. So as Lightning continues to increase and more people start putting their Bitcoin on Lightning, we are going to have zero cost, one Satoshi cost, uh, Bitcoin transactions that are instantaneous. So that's going to be fun. Yeah, it keeps on expanding. I expect it to only expand further, uh, especially as we get more institutions in the space who are looking for very quick, rapid ways to be able to offer Bitcoin payments. You know, it's cool to be able to say, hey, you can do this through so-and-so, but it's, it, it sounds a bit more attractive to say, hey, use our, our Lightning channel. We can make sure and secure the payment for you and you pay 20 Satoshis as opposed to just one and everyone's like, I don't mind paying 20 Satoshis and then $1 parity, yada, yada, yada. Anyway, very cool news. And I'm I'm expecting this to be the thing because it's kind of the the longest lasting that we have right now. Yeah, I do hope that you all enjoyed. I do hope that you all are having a great day, a great morning, a great afternoon, a great evening, wherever you are, wherever you might be. I do hope that it is absolutely fantastic. Very weird times in the cryptocurrency space. Um, we'll see where we go. We see, we'll, we'll see what's happening. We know that all the accumulation is happening. Um and especially large transactions of Bitcoin are flying through the network at all times. Uh, I, I like looking at these sometimes because you see like half a million dollars just being transferred. So it's kind of cool. Anyway, thank you all once again for watching and or listening. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. S see you. <laughs>